does marijuana cause psychiatric disorders? We're going to look at this article that was published back in December of 2023, so less than a year ago. It does talk about what their studies found and what their review found. The article starts off by saying the widespread use of cannabis, aka marijuana, and its increased potency are associated with the rise in cannabis-related disorders. It highlights the urgent need for doctors to screen for patients who are experiencing symptoms of cannabis use disorder, also known as HUD, D-U-D, which means they are experiencing significant problems from the use of the drug. I'm hoping later on in the article, it does talk about exactly what kind of increased potency that they're referring to in the beginning, because I don't know if they do. So this article definitely is not talking about casual use necessarily. Someone who smokes maybe once a week or once in a while at parties, I believe it is referring to consistent use, or at least enough use that a person does begin experiencing some kind of negative effect on their personal life. The article goes on to say that nearly one in five Americans ages 12 and older used cannabis in 2021. So that means they could have just used it once in 2021, or they could have used it a million times. And it says that more than 16 million people met the criteria for cannabis use disorder as outlined in the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Health Disorder, also referred to as the DSM, the DSM 5TR, which is the newest version, I believe. Young adults ages 18 to 25 are the most likely to do that. The review found more than 14% of those in this age group had cannabis use disorder, so between 18 to 25, they're more likely to smoke a lot of weed. I would definitely agree to that, especially since that's the time that you become an adult. You're able to buy weed or cannabis on your own. You're also able to become more independent. Or maybe people go off to school and they're able to binge and smoke as much as they want. And this might be the first time in their life they're that independent. There's a quote from David Lee Gorlick, who's a medical doctor and a PhD and a professor of psychiatry at the University of Maryland. And he's the one who wrote this article. That said, there's a lot of misinformation in the public sphere about cannabis and its effects on psychological health, with many assuming that this drug is safe to use with no side effects. He also goes on to say it is important for physicians and the public to understand that cannabis can have addictive and to recognize signs and symptoms in order to get properly diagnosed and treated. I'm not sure if people really believe that we would safe to use with no side effects. I mean, the whole point of using weed is to experience the side effect. Some of the side effects include getting really high. You get very stupid at munchies and you laugh at everything. You are just in a state of euphoria. A lot of the things that people use alcohol for or people who take psychiatric medications, they are trying to feel big. They are definitely using it to create some kind of psychological change to feel a different way, either better or just to get over some negative kind of feeling. But I do agree that some people do believe that it is safe with negligible side effects. To me, the statement is pretty vague. He's not leaving much wiggle room when he says that people believe that it's safe to use with no side effects. I think people understand that smoking marijuana is not for your lungs and that the side effects are kind of what they want them to be. But I don't think he's referring to the positive side effects which people know about. He's obviously referring to the negative side effects. I do agree with them that a lot of people don't understand the effects of long-term use. I've experienced it myself personally. I used to smoke for about 15 years. And so compared to alcohol and a lot of other drugs, marijuana does feel a lot safer, but definitely not safer than not using it at all. I would say statements by the doctor are very relative and very generalized and not very specific. It's not really given a proper context of what he's talking about. I also do agree that it's important to recognize signs 
and symptoms of abuse are misused. You know, there's a big difference between using marijuana for fun, sometimes on weekends, and using it as medication. And not even just using it as a medication, but being addicted to it. Like using so much that it does create symptoms of withdrawal. These are things that did happen to me and a lot of people I know from personal experience. Other people experience the same thing. And sometimes they develop worse symptoms like psychosis or schizophrenia. And I think a lot of people kind of hear casually about these types of things. Like people who have abused it once or twice say, oh, I don't do it because it makes me paranoid. So a lot of people do experience these very negative symptoms or side effects. And then other people may experience it first, but they may get over it after a while. Or they feel that maybe they were already anxious and paranoid. So it kind of feels that it's not that different when they do use marijuana. Their paranoia and anxiousness maybe feels familiar or that it's not necessarily caused by marijuana, but that it was already an underlying type of feeling that they already had. And a lot of times the effects of marijuana make opi with that anxiety and paranoia feel like it's a little easier. And you can just hang out and kind of avoid the things that make you feel anxious or paranoid. You might be experiencing it, but not so much that it obviously affects their day-to-day lives. The article goes on to say cannabis use disorder is defined as problematic behavior. Their warning Symptoms include craving a drug and failing to control its use despite experiencing negative side effects like problems at work or school. It is also most prevalent people who use cannabis more than four times a week, but while the primary risk factor is the frequency of use. Having another substance use disorder or other psychiatric condition also increases the likelihood of diagnosis. So definitely if marijuana is causing problems at work or school, or if you're trying to control your marijuana use, then there's a sense that you have what they call cannabis use disorder. Some people would probably call it a lot of different things, like being a hardcore stoner. But as far as this article is concerned, and the psychiatric community is concerned, this would be considered some kind of psychiatric disorder, yeah. aka cannabis use disorder. So this article is about for people who use it regularly more than four times a week. The paper also highlighted other dangers of excessive cannabis use. Cannabis use accounts for 10% of all drug-related emergency room visits in the U.S. and is associated with a 30 to 40% increased risk of car accidents. In 2022, 18 to 25 year olds accounted for the highest rate of cannabis related emergency department visits. And that's a pretty big deal. And while I do not think that they're actually going to talk about the increased potency of marijuana, like actually give specific examples or statistical data that from personal experience and from the experience of others, that marijuana is way more potent than it used to be. Uh, in the 70s and before that or even into the 80s was under 10% THC whereas now with the concentrates they've been able to really refine all that THC into just some goo and so you're getting 10 times the amount of THC you might have before and you're getting it instantly even the, the, the way you ingest it has become so much more refined. That's what really makes a drug a hard drug, like methamphetamine or cocaine. Those things come from like a very diluted, continuing on, to quote Mark T. Gladwin, a medical doctor, approximately one in 10 people who use cannabis will become addicted, and for those who start before it, age 18 or rate rises to one in six anybody who hangs around with people who smoke a lot or likes to use marijuana when they go out 
socially. One in 10 of those people is going to be like, oh, I love this. I'm going to start smoking this. I'm going to start smoking this more often it's because of the potency of the of marijuana that 10% of all drug-related emergency room visits are associated with cannabis from personal anecdotal experience with people I know. They have been admitted to hospitals. They have these psychotic breakdowns from just using way too much marijuana, especially when combined with psychiatric meds or just natural propensities towards one um, psych psychiatric disorder or another or symptom. And considering how bad people drive sober, that I could definitely see how smoking marijuana and driving for someone who's already not a great driver get into more and more accidents. Um, people would always tell me, oh, I drive better on marijuana. And who knows? Like for some people, that's probably true in their minds. There are a lot of people who are terrible drivers, completely sober. And there are a lot of really good drivers who smoke marijuana, but you're going to have that percentage in between still considered a driving under the influence trying to smoke while you're driving is not a great thing and it can very well lead to an accident because you're distracted trying to hit that bowl or to get lightheaded when i was smoking we didn't have the vape pens you had to pack that bowl while you're driving smart people i guess would roll joints you had to you roll the joint before you got in the car and then you're smoking in the car and there's smoke and the worst thing is when the ash falls down <laughs> this starts burning or you drop the joint and you're like starting a fire in your car your car on fire or your legs burning from ash it is very distracting and it only takes a second to get in an accident. The one in 10 people who use cannabis will become addicted. And those who start before age 18, the rate rises to one in six. Mark T. Gladwin, medical doctor, who is also the John C. and Akiko K. Bowers, distinguished professor and dean of the University of Mal Maryland School of Medicine and the vice president of medical affairs at the University of Maryland in Baltimore. He says, as the use of this drug increases, we must delve deeply in basic research to understand the brain's cannabinoid system. We must also design translational studies of therapies that target these brain mechanisms to help those with cannabis use disorder, particularly young adults and pregnant women, overcome their dependence on this drug. That's what I hope to do as a social work student and then as a future therapist trying to help people develop better coping skills to be able to function in their lives thanks for listening that is the end of the video i look forward to doing more videos and this is actually a lot of fun please hit like or subscribe if you found any kind of value from this video Thank you so much and leave a comment as well.